So today I'm going to be taking a look at a relatively new micro brand under the name Van Banner Watches. They're based out of Canada and their whole kind of philosophy is the idea of not using super off the shelf parts and making things a little bit more unique, a little bit more customized, uh, doing really just their own designs that aren't completely riffs off of everything else that you always see, right? As a note, this watch was sent to review by the brand itself and I was able to keep the watch afterwards. Uh, they do not get to review my video beforehand or have any say in what I say in the video. So keep that in mind and yeah, let's take a closer look. So we have a diameter of 40 millimeters, lug to lug of 46.2, height of 13.1, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for the watch we're gonna have through the open glass case back here, a Seiko NH34 GMT movement beating away. Nice little customized rotor as well for uh, the model name Adroit. This watch does have 100 meters of water resistance with a regular push-pull crown. There is no screw down function. The watch has C3 Superluminova on the bezel and in the kind of sandwich loom style as well as on each and every hand. We do have sapphire glass on the front with an inner AR coating, which is nice to see. And the watch has a bi-directional 48 click bezel. Last but not least, the watch retails directly from Van Banner Watches for $290 and at the moment, 17 cents. So taking a look at the dial here, and I do think they did a good job, especially considering the price point. We have this beautiful texture that they call a sand textured sandwich dial, which I do like that they went for a sandwich dial as well because it adds that little extra three dimensionality and gives a little bit of depth to the dial overall. We do have a kind of charcoal grayish black tone to the dial here. They also do a kind of more fume-ish blue dial, and, which I think looks pretty nice, but this is the more classic of the two. The text is very minimal here. We just have the VB logo at the 12, automatic there at six, which is done in that kind of smile configuration and GMT right below it. I do think it's a little bit odd that automatic's the only thing one in that smile configuration and two in more cursive type script. You see we have a pretty kind of unique handset in my opinion. These are a, I guess you can say modified pencil style. Very thick there for the hour hand, much thinner for the minutes, which is nice for differentiation between the two. They're also done in a style or finish that I haven't seen before. It's almost like a gray PVD or gray coating, not quite brushed, more of a metallic leaning feel. It does, I think, make the hands almost blend away into the dial at point so maybe hinders legibility a little bit but i do like that almost industrial look it gives to the watch one thing to note too and it might be hard to catch on camera but the crystal here has a little bit of a chamfer and cut down edge to it which you can tell but because of that it has this very unique effect on the outside of the seconds track if you kind of angle you can see it's a fairly large seconds track that is pretty prominent overall but when you look at the watch dead on it really fades away and becomes much more gentle and much more uh, almost elegant in its execution because a lot of that is cut away from that chamfer in the crystal it's a super unique detail that i haven't seen many other watches do before and i like how it's executed there it's almost one of those things where when you move it around you see more detail uh, but what's nice is on direct viewing it's very uh, put together looking, I guess you could say. One thing to note, and I do think this is something they can improve on in the future, they do use C3 Super Lomanova, as I mentioned. Because of that, it has this very greenish, almost taupish leaning loom signature, which I think one stands out, of course, against the more dark black dial, but also stands out very much against all the pure white text that is used on the dial itself. I don't think the tone that looks particularly premium. I think if they just went with a pure white loom, it would look better. Uh, but if that doesn't bother you, it still is well done, especially in the sandwich configuration, and it glows very well. To note, this is a desk GMT, so when you pull the crown all the way out, of course, you're moving all hands in sync together. When you push the crown in, if you go out to the first position, you are jumping the date, moving uh, towards yourself, and if going away from yourself, you are moving the GMT hand. I do think this is one of the better uses of a GMT, very convenient. I like the way you can set both the date and the GMT very easily and frankly because it ends up being cheaper as a desk GMT I also like that aspect you can see we have mainly square hour markers these more pointed ones at 369 and a larger kind of fatter almost blend between the square and the pointed marker at 12. I think if they would have made these square hour markers rectangular it would have blended in overall a little bit better or vice versa if they would have made these pointed hour markers a little bit thinner or a little bit smaller in length it would have felt a little bit more cohesive but as it stands I think it's a cool dial it's different and it's not a blend of markers I've seen before. 
Zooming in on the DAO, and we can see there's a lot of detail that comes to life. One of the main things that I notice is the fact that every hour marker has this kind of uh, blackened border to it, which gives a little bit more contrast, gives a little bit of depth, but it also leads down from the base style into the marker at a little bit of a slant. So it's very nice. It's a cool detail that you don't see very often. Definitely uh, attention to detail, which is awesome to see. You, of course, also notice this more, uh, rough is not the right word, but kind of leather grained, igneous type rock feel. Uh, to the base dial texture itself. Again, they call it a uh, sand texture. It is interesting and thankfully has a lot of life even from wrist view. You see the text at six o'clock and even down to the seconds track is all done in this same quality of printing on a tiny little base black uh, platform that has this white print on top of it. It looks good, it looks premium, it doesn't get lost in the texture of the dial, which is important. Looking very hard for QC issues, there's not many. You can see there's a tiny little black speck there on the six o'clock marker loom infill. And then I believe there's a little bit there on the edge of the 12 as well. But other than that, it's a really well finished wash. The loom infill looks very, very smooth, much smoother than you would see with almost any watch. The hands themselves, again, done in this coating, I'm not quite sure of, but done quite smoothly. It looks pretty much unblemished and there's not really any scratches or marks or bubbling that shouldn't be there. The painting of the seconds hand is done similarly well and similarly nicely and even down to the GMT hand it is done well between the border of the white paint and the red paint the lumen fill still is done on the hands almost just as well as the uh, markers which is rare to see and I think it is just a watch that holds up under macro which is rare to see especially at the price points coming out of sub $300 and something I didn't mention is of course we do have the offset date window there what is nice is it's color matched it does have the same date framing as the rest of the hour markers so it doesn't look too out of place but of course it is there at the end of the day i probably would have forgone it but it doesn't honestly draw my attention too much especially because it blends into the dial taking a look in natural light we can see the dial definitely comes out in direct sunlight you do see the pattern very clearly and very present on the watch absolutely uh, you do get a little bit of glare from the crystal even though it does have under ar coating i do think they should just probably add a couple more layers what is nice though is you do get a lot of light play from that bezel there which is i think looking pretty nice in the shade that light play goes away a little bit it's a little bit more dramatic at uh, extreme angles so you kind of have to turn the watch more to be able to see that but the watch still looks great the glare definitely comes back to the crystal which is a little unfortunate but honestly when you're looking at it at dead on kind of direct angles it is a very visible watch i just do think they could use a better ar coating overall the watch still looks great the shiny parts definitely pop out at you in the shade it looks premium it looks good it looks like a well finished and uh, really fairly expensive watch for what you're paying for so moving on to the case of this watch and i think they did an amazing job here and this is honestly probably my favorite part about the watch not only is it a very ergonomic case that is finished very well but I just do think there's a lot of details here that you wouldn't expect to see at this price. Here we have a mixture of mainly matte blasted and polished surfaces with the one exception being the bezel itself, which is done in a circular brushing, which don't quite know why they did the circular brushing there and not anywhere else, but it does look nice. It does catch the light. It really has a lot of life to it that wouldn't, I think, have been there if it would have just been blasted. So. Maybe I do understand why, but it is odd. It's the only brushed element. With that being said, it is brushed very well. It's a consistent grain. It's done finely. It doesn't look cheap, and it's nice to see. It's also good to see that they did a loom infill, which is almost uh, imperceptible to me because it's not often you see black infill for loom. Uh, I've personally not really seen it very often, but yeah, the whole bezel is loomed, even the red triangle. What really makes this case shine, at least to me, is how all the polished elements jump out at you. One of the most beautiful elements to me is this polished edge to the bezel itself. It's very interesting how the bezel was done uh, because it's the only surface that has three different finishes to it. The top of the bezel is brushed, the top edge is polished, and the complete side edge and the inner grooves are done in the same blasting as the rest of the watch. So really a complicated finishing especially at the price point you have a beautiful geometric type of knurling in there not perfect for grip it's not very grippy overall but it looks nice i would uh, work on the grip overall a little bit more uh, but 
the way that that just pops out to you with that polished edge, the way the polished edge complements the little bit of a chamfer into the crystal there. You then start to notice the super large chamfer along the side of the lugs there. And of course it leads your eye into the middle links of the bracelet as well. So there's just a lot to kind of draw your eye into to appreciate because all these polished accents are really just doing just that, accenting the watch and doing it perfectly. As I mentioned earlier, the bezel's a little bit hard to grip. It's not terrible as long as you hold it at the side there and kind of put pressure inwards, then you can turn it quite easily. It's a very interesting ratchet feel to the bezel that I haven't felt with any other bezel before. Not to say it's bad, it's just odd. Uh, you definitely know you're turning the bezel. It doesn't feel like the bezel has any weird back play or uh, give in between the positions. It's, it's very sturdy. I guess the best way to put it is it's a very chunky, hefty, uh, like ratchety clicky feeling that again, could be softer, could be smoother, uh, could feel a little bit more luxurious. So that's one place where, not to say it's bad, it's just not super premium feeling. Looking at the side of the case really quickly, one, we do have a signed crown with a logo, which is actually loomed as well, which is cool. Drilled lug holes, which is always really nice to see. It just makes strap changing very easy. A fairly thin mid case with a large case back, so it sits well into the wrist overall. Uh, the other side of the case has the logo uh, engraved into it. Not my favorite execution there. I wish they would forgo that. I don't hate it because honestly, you don't really see it on the wrist that often, but yeah, not my favorite. You do have quick release on the bracelet, which is really nice, super convenient, and something we don't see from really many brands. And it's a really sturdy feeling quick release too, which is nice. One, the bracelet I think is finished very well, and it's a bracelet style that's pretty unique. It's this, I guess, double H-link, you would call it. It's it's a really unique style that I haven't seen on pretty much any other watch. It does come into a push-button deployant uh, butterfly clasp there. Uh, we do also see that we have a regular full link and a one and a half link. So you're able to really get a good size uh, on the watch, really, because the normal standard link is fairly small, and the one and a half link can get you in those in-between size. They include two of those one and a half links. So again, I think you can get a pretty good size in there. And the watch also does use screws, which are finished in the same way as the bracelet, which is a really nice touch. Looking quickly on the case back, they went for a very no-nonsense finish. There's no text on the outside saying what's happening with the watch because frankly, you probably know if you're buying it, you read the specs, you already understand what's happening. Uh, so you're all good to go. It's a really interesting pattern they went for on the case back for the grip and the way to uh, unscrew it from the case back. I do think it has a little bit of hindrance to it in terms of design, just because sometimes when you're winding the crown, your finger can kind of get caught on the edge of this and scrape in a little bit of a weird way. Uh, if they had made this a little bit of a smaller pattern or rounded the edges slightly, I think it'd be a little bit better. It's not really a huge issue, but I just definitely do feel uh, it catch my finger a little bit on the edge sometimes, which is just not the most pleasant feeling. You get it most often when you really go up in the winding and then kind of come back down. It usually catches like right here on the edge of your finger and between your nail. So it's just something to keep in mind your alignment of this little logo might be different, so you might not have that issue, but it is a issue that can persist with this design. So moving on to how the watch wears, earlier I was wearing this uh, Alexander Shorikov here, and here we have the watch sitting on my six and a half inch wrist, and as you can see, it wears amazingly well. It's a really constrained lug to lug. It doesn't really sit too high up off the wrist either. It's constructed very well. The bracelet's super comfortable. It has a little bit of a taper to it, but not too much. It starts at 20 at the lugs here. Tapers pretty much in the first one to two links to 18 and stays that way all the way through. So it's a very good feel on the wrist overall. You also get a good amount of articulation from that link style as well. One thing to note is I do think this style of bracelet does feel and lean a little bit dressy, whereas the head of the watch is not quite that. It of course is more of a sporty style of watch and it's a little bit at odds with the bracelet styling in my opinion. I do think if they would have done that full blasting effect to the mid-links and then just maybe did a polished chamfer, it would have 
tied into the design a little bit better, but it's serviceable as is and is a very comfortable bracelet. Taking a look at the side view, as you can see, the watch sits very well on the wrist. It sits and sinks really right in. So it effectively feels very small for a GMT movement, very compact wearing for a sports watch that has 100 meters of water resistance. And I do think they did a really good job uh, on the ergonomics and the feel of this watch in general. Moving on to some other straps, here we have this very nice silicone one-piece uh, NATO from Benchmark Straps. Super comfortable, obviously sports it out a little bit more, all black on black. Uh, super thin, so it doesn't really add any height to the watch, which is nice. I think it suits the watch very well. Definitely makes the red tones pop out a lot more, which I think is good. Uh, something to also note, and I haven't mentioned it yet, is this is one of the very few GMTs you could use to track three time zones if you really wanted to. You would have the GMT hand pointing to one time zone, of course, the local hour handset, and then the GMT hand set to somewhere else, whereas like for this example, it is set to plus six. So now you're basing it off of something else. Is anyone really gonna use it for that? I don't think so, but it is a cool functionality. For something a little bit more funky and different, we have this woven style leather strap from Tons. I think it adds a little bit more of a rugged feel to the watch. Definitely, I think fits the aesthetic, the brown, I think naturally just fits with the tones of the watch as well. I think it looks good. Won't be for everyone. I don't think this watch is perfectly suited to most leathers, but I do think this is a unique combination. The stitching I think ties into the style of the markers as well. And yeah, I think it's a pretty cool combo. And lastly, we have a very generic FKM rubber strap. This is a very nice deep dark green. What is good is when you have the C3 green leading loom, it plays very well off of green tone. So any shade of green that you put on this watch will work and will, I think, draw your eye away from the green tones from the loom a little bit more, or at least make them feel a little more cohesive because now there's other greens to pull from. A little bit of a Christmassy combo with the greens and reds that are going on on this watch, but it's a very comfortable strap because of course the rubber, it conforms very well, and I think pairs with the watch and the style of the watch nicely. So taking a look at the loom here, and this is another area where I think the watch did a pretty good job. Everything on the watch is loomed and it's very readable in the dark. The entire bezel is loomed, although not as bright as any other element there. So although a fun aspect, not super necessary, but the hands and the dial are loomed very well. Of course, you have that sandwich style, which lends to giving a lot of area to be able to loom. I will say it dies a little quicker than I would have expected, but uh, I guess dies relative. It just dims a little quicker than I would expect, but it does last for quite a bit. So you would absolutely tell where the seconds hand is. You can tell where the GMT hand is. The hands themselves, the hour and the minute are a little bit brighter than the rest of the markers themselves. But as it stands, they did a really good job on the loom. Looming it up and comparing to the classic Timex, you can see on initial quote unquote loomage, I would argue that they are just as legible as each other. So really there is no downfall to the Van Banner based off the loom that they put onto the watch. I think they did a good job. Could they add a couple more layers? Sure, why not? But I think for the price, it's completely acceptable. And if not better than most watches you would expect, so pros and cons of this watch, and one of the biggest pros for me is just gonna be the construction overall. The watch is just undoubtedly well made. You have a good amount of water resistance, you have very solid finishing in terms of the way the accent polishing is used, the way that you have elements like a chamfered crystal that you wouldn't have expected to see here. Uh, and just again, the overall feel of the watch is solid and good, especially considering the price point. Usually, at least in my case, and from my experience, more affordable brands go for simpler, less ornate cases because it's more affordable to do. Whereas here, what we see is the case has not been ignored at all. Another big pro for me is I think this is awesome value. At just under $300, you're getting a GMT movement, a very solid watch, uh, good bracelet, good construction, 100 meters of water resistance. It genuinely is, I think, a very interesting watch for the price point, as long as you like the aesthetic. I don't think it's gonna be an aesthetic for everybody, but I think there's a lot here to like, especially considering uh, if you're trying to, in a sense, check boxes, it has sapphire, it has a cool texture to the dial, it has a complication to it, it has enough water resistance. It does do a lot of good stuff here, and I think that should be appreciated. So moving on to cons, one of the bigger ones for me is gonna be the bezel. The action to it is just very odd. It's not a feeling I've felt before. It, to me, doesn't feel refined. It feels uh, a little bit more crude in a sense which is odd to say because it's a very defined click on each position. It just doesn't feel um, 
overly elegant getting there. I do think they can do things to make that a smoother experience. Honestly, if you had a bi-directional friction fit bezel, I would prefer that uh, more here. Not to say it would have blended well with the rest of the design or the ethos of the design, but I still would have liked it. Of course, as with most watches that use C3 Luminova that has a little bit of a green tint to it, that is also gonna be a con for me. I don't like introducing color tones on the watch that don't feel like they're meant to be there. If there was any other green element on the watch, sure. Uh, <laughs> use C3 to your heart's content. But I just do think on average, using a white toned loom tends to be much more cohesive in design for the rest of the watch. It tends to look better. It, it contrasts more against the dial and makes the markers stand out more. There, to me, is no downside. Another con for the watch to me, uh, and I think to maybe some people, is that maybe the watch is too unique in a sense. The brand, again, the philosophy is the idea of not using off-the-shelf parts, creating their own design language and going their own way, which at the end of the day, some people will like and some people won't. I can't tell you whether or not this aesthetic will appeal to you or not, but I don't think it's a crowd-pleasing design. There are things about it which feel a little bit too uh, brutalist in, in, in design nature, I think. But then there's also things that don't feel in harmony with each other, like the bracelet is a dressy and elegant styling on a what you would I think call a rather sporty watch overall. So it's one of those things where I think there are just little elements here and there that can be tweaked to make the watch not only feel more cohesive, but to make the design that is already unique to begin with shine more. Because if you're going for a design that is more out there, that is more your own kind of flair, you have to, in a sense, make sure everything feels like it's meant to be there, everything feels right. And I know that takes time. It takes time to decide what that DNA of the brand is and how to accomplish it well and what you like and don't like to see on your watch in a sense. I don't doubt that the brand will continue to iterate and hopefully the watch will feel more and more cohesive within itself going forward. But final thoughts, and I actually do really like the watch. On first kind of glance aesthetic, it's not a watch that I personally love mainly because I'm not a huge sports watch guy, and this is a very sporty leaning GMT execution. With that being said, what draws me to the watch is how well done the rest of the elements are. The bracelet is very comfortable on wrist, the case shape is amazingly done and wears well. That is absolutely a case platform and profile they can use in other watches and other designs and do very well with it. If you use a thinner hand-wound movement or something like that, it can easily be a dressy styled case. Uh, and it's nice to have a case like that that has versatility and doesn't feel at odds being in a sports watch and in a dress watch. I think the construction is much better than you would expect at this price point. It definitely punches more up to that like five, six hundred dollar range and uh, plays more with brands like Notice and Traska and uh, having owned a lot of those pieces, I can say that confidently. It feels like a well-built watch, absolutely. Again, there's things that can be improved but at the end of the day, no watch is perfect. This watch is no exception to that. But if you do like the specs, if you do like what it's offering, there's a lot to love here for sure. As a side note, this watch will be given away in my Patreon group for free. Uh, the whole idea of the group is just to get a little bit of a community together of watch nerds that like to talk watches and other stuff. The dues will completely be used for giveaways and buying watches or straps or whatnot, whatever the group decides to use the funds on. So overall, I am not accessing the funds in any way other than maybe potentially reviewing a piece that is purchased before giving it away, if I have the permission to. But yeah, if you are interested in this watch and interested in getting it for free after a Patreon subscription, then join, we'll have the link down below. And yeah, that's all for me. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.